Check out the snow, folks. I got a little jangle bells in there. Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project bringing you a grand solar minimum update Saturday, December 15th at 2 a.m. Mountain Time 2018. It's late and the snow is piling up great. Check out your December to remember. White Christmas much? I agree. It's amazing. Let's run it through. <clears throat> Holy macaroni. It's boom time. Soaking rain poses flooding danger and slow travel in the southeast U.S. Lumber River, natural and scenic and deadly. Flooding that hasn't been seen since Hurricane Florence is creeping back in the Carolinas. The Lumber River is forecasted to climb back into major flood stage by the end of the weekend around Lumberton. How do you get in and out? I don't. I stay in. I have to yell from the road to Diane Ann Jones, who just celebrated her 81st birthday, but who won't be able to leave and celebrate anytime soon. So you are stuck at home? Yes, with, with a little chair and a cane. Snowmelt from the storm that hit western North Carolina last weekend is playing a big part in this. But rain forecasted for this weekend is expected to cause even more problems, like closing down roads and isolating and even inundating some homes. How long do you expect to be stuck at home? Till the water's gone. A waiting game where after all of the recent <laughs> floods, patience is running low. This is ridiculous. In Lumberton, North Carolina for AccuWeather, I'm Jonathan Petromano. Heads up, this is ridiculous. And we can't even escape from this. While the storm is moving into the eastern United States, and it will be warmer when compared to last weekend's storm, which dumped record snows in the southeast, it may create trouble in the south in the form of flooding. Heads up, Atlanta. Cooler air below, rain above. Flooding potential for all of southeastern PA. In areas where there is little or no snow on the ground, the saturated state of the soil and a general one to three inches of rain forecast can be enough to cause urban, small stream flooding, flash flooding, and for your basement to be totally fluxed. Unsettled through Saturday, rain from last week's storm has already forced some of the rivers in the Carolinas and Georgia out of their banks. The Lumber River in Lumberton, North Carolina, which is hit hard by flooding uh, due to Florence in the summer, is forecast to reach major flood stage this weekend. They know how to prepare. Expect travel delays to expand as the rain wets the roads and flooding continues. Areas of fog will develop and the cloud ceiling lowers around airports including Atlanta, Charlotte, North Carolina, Orlando, Florida into your Saturday. Flash flooding and severe thunderstorms may occur. Through your Friday evening, expect torrential downpours, flash flooding, gusty winds, travel delays, isolated tornadoes. <clears throat> However, a few isolated tornadoes cannot be ruled out, Walker said. Some of the heaviest rainfall from the storm may fall from Florida to the Carolina coast. And the lingering snow problem. Snow has been, well, been melting and will continue to disappear in some areas in the wake of last week's heavy snowfall. We reported last night on them having to actually remove it from downtown Roanoke. At the very least, where snow is piled up, it's blocking storm drains and urban flooding is likely in those regions. Here we see a man sitting on a mountain of snow at a shopping center, contemplating why he's a slave and how miserable his life is. He could escape to the Secret Valley. West Texas snow leads to crashes, road closures, and unfortunately the death of the mayor. 
of Tuscola and his wife. They were killed on Thursday. Heavy snow in West Texas led to numerous crashes that the mayor and others couldn't even handle, prompting officials to close several major highways. Tuscola Mayor Robert Vance Elkins, 82, and his 80-year-old wife, Von Dean Rose Elkins, they were killed Thursday afternoon in a three-vehicle wreck on a slick Taylor County road, according to KTAB-TV. Yeah, the incident occurred in the afternoon on Highway 83, local time 1245. The Texas Department of Public Safety said the vehicle traveling north hydroplane on the wet pavement crashed into Elkins' vehicle head on. And it was a wrap. Drive safe. Don't die. Go slow if you don't know. Temperatures stay cold Friday after early snowfall in Alaska. Yeah, they're getting it. Anchorage, Alaska, we warm up to 20 on Friday with a 60% chance of 1 to 2 inches of snow returning in the afternoon. Cooling down to 15 in the evening with another 70% chance of snow right now. As well as after midnight, up to 3 to 4 more inches. Mostly cloudy and 26 tomorrow. We'll keep the snow there for the rest of the winter. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. Look at how cold it is in Alaska. You don't live there. Yeah, neither do I. That's a good reason. It's cold up there. Snow on the ground in Iowa. Say it ain't a Shiowa. Whatever that is. Early this afternoon, clouds and fogs were moving southeast, leaving behind a clear sky. This gave a great opportunity to see where snow was on the ground. And look at Iowa. It's mostly covered. As well as many other states. And by Christmas, snow is forecast to hit 46 of these glorious states in the final two days. Yeah, two days before Christmas Eve Eve, Christmas Eve and Christmas is going to be a white one. It will be as if Santa lives in most states. Kids will be glorious. They'll be like, didn't Al Gore say five years ago there wouldn't be snow? Why is there snow everywhere? The map below shows the snow depths across the nation as of now, which is now, which is a day after yesterday, in case you didn't know. So we're going to blow it up for those people who wear glasses. Because you are in the effing awesome classes. Snow depth, as of now, everywhere. Which is extremely deep in this purple zone. <laughs> Very deep over here. And apparently covering most of Canada. Most of it. I like to see the heavier depths here in the Ontario region because they were complaining there was no snow ever there because of global warming last year. You have the Great Lakes region snowed and look at this huge swath of southern Appalachian snow. Ho ho! Snow on the ground as far as southeastern Arizona. Yeah. Did you know that winter is in a week and there's already snow in south central Arizona? Heads up. Whew. A lot of snow on the ground. Area covered by snow, 32.6%. Area covered last month, 27.6%. That was a lot. Thank you, Mark Schlack and Blacker. You're a cracking schmacker. Kicking ass and taking names. Let's go up here if we can do it. Snow conditions report coming out yesterday. This guy's got... He either smoked a blunt and he's really pie-eyed, or we just caught him with his eyes closed. Snow conditions report December 13. <clears throat> Winter weather will be a hiatus leading up to Christmas. Yeah, that was what it was happening on the model yesterday, you folks. But look what's happening now. Can you say a white Christmas? Can you give me a jingle bell? Yes, that's a jingle bell. Straight from an F-sharp native flute, which should be impossible. But I know to hold my fingers in certain places. Yeah, 87 inches, 50 inches, still on the map. That's additional to the already 4 to 8 feet of snow that has fallen in British Columbia. Let's walk it through. 
Here's your Saturday afternoon. Heavy snow coming into Washington State. Light snow slathering Oregon. A little light flurries throughout most of northern Idaho, western Montana. And you're going to get it in northern Maine. A few flurries. And then the deep snow moves into BC, moving down into California, all the way down into the Sierras, where there are winter storm warnings in effect right now. We'll show them to you. And then the look at this Monday event for your commute up in New England. Heads up. Connecticut, Massachusetts, southern New York State, northern PA, northern New Jersey. Quite an impactful tail end to this event in the form of snow. And all of the Northeast will be covered by Tuesday, the 18th, three days from now. Covet. These are models, but the models look amazing right before Christmas. Heavy blizzard coming through Ontario and Eastern Canada on the 22nd and the 23rd. Heads up up there, thousands of square miles are going to get buried in up to 20 inches of snow. So in case you didn't know, right up there, Maritimes heads up. But we're seeing another storm take place here. It could be blizzard conditions too far out to nail it. But we're looking at Indiana, Ohio, Kentucky. You've been complaining. You're in the center of this model. West Virginia, the whole state, all of Tennessee. Yeah. And guess who else is involved? Alabama. Heads up, Greg Allison. It may be coming down to your neck of the woods. Georgia, you're going to get it. West of North Carolina, West in Virginia, all of Jers. Boom! Christmas, ready? Boom! I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. In southern Arizona and other weird places as well. It may be dry in a few areas in Nebraska, but you always get snow out there. So give it to the rest of the country. Yeah, and that's tonight's first boom. Give it to the rest of the country. Oh, that's not it. Let's get rid of that. Boom! There it is. <coughs> Loving it. Come on, hurry up. It's late. My legs are freezing. Why can't we get out of this? We're stuck, folks. Bear with us. <laughs> Okay, we're out. <laughs> That's all you need is a little bit of, little bit of flute. U.S. and Canada daily snow for powder. The Northwest is the best. View the map. Here's your share of the upcoming snowfall. Huge totals, 55 inches. Holy sh! Five day snow totals, December 12th through the 17th, 49 inches, 20 inches, 71 inches. That's a 71. Holy macaroni. Forecast for Thursday and Friday following the snow in Wyoming, Utah, and Colorado on Wednesday. Wednesday evening, there's a soft snow for these locations on Thursday morning, which we just showed you the totals. From your Saturday to Sunday, that heavy snow is going to dump in BC. Boom! And these are inches. 24 or more in some areas, extending all the way down to the Olympics and into Washington State. Moderate snows in western Montana, northern Idaho, and Oregon, as we showed you just moments ago. Moving through your Monday through Friday, heavy snow is going to move down into the northern Rockies, down into the Sierras, spread across the central prairies. And we're not fairies, but these are models. And this is your models, Monday the 17th through the 21st. Little pocket here, lake effect, northern PA, west of the Finger Lakes region. Temperature averages through your Christmas are pretty mild. They're all running about a degree above normal across the northern hemisphere. So we're going to get a little break here because we just came out of a cold period. But that's not going to mean less snow because we showed you the models and they're showing a Christmas blizzard up in eastern Canada and then hitting the east coast. Coast with the most, all the way down to the southeast. We're talking northern Alabama, northern Georgia, 
in the entire Appalachian front covered in snow. Heads up, Kentucky, Ohio, Indy, you're on the map. You're looking good. Idaho is going to be tilting, as we predicted, by Christmas. The whole state of Idaho is going to be Christmas. So, if you want to go somewhere for Christmas, I recommend Idaho, where the entire state will be white. Weather Ready Nation map, heavy rain and snow melt threatens flooding in the southeast and mid-Atlantic. Strong cold front presses across the northwest. A southern storm system will bring heavy and excessive rain from the southeast to the mid-Atlantic through Saturday with a secondary heavy rain threat in the lower Mississippi Valley into the Ohio Valley out west. A strong cold front will continue to rain and dump heavy snows, yes, in the northwest. Mountain snow gusty winds into Saturday morning. Another front will bring more unsettled weather to the region by Sunday. Here are your flood warnings and watches. All south of the Mason-Dixon line through your Maryland. Yes, through your Virginia and all of your North Carolina. 500 counties under flood watch. Check your map. Heads up. Flood watches in southern Georgia into your northern Florida. So go check that gray area here which is danger zone so click on your zone that's dangerous we have winter storm warnings in the north central Sa uh, sierras heads up more coming as predicted ow what did i tell you you're interrupting my podcast now go back in your hole NERC winter preparedness initiatives will help keep lights on in the Northeast. That's what they say. We're, we'll see North America Electric Reliability Corporation. <laughs> NERC released its reliability assessment just days ago, which found that grid operators have adequate generation resources and transmission to reliably serve the demand this winter. And they're giving credit to preparedness programs and new coordination initiatives, including the Oppenheimer Ranch Project. But we're going to see if they can hold true to their word. And I think they're going to be totally fluxed by March. Heads up. That was a cat dumping stuff over. Crazy. Stick with us. We're almost done. Not really. We have 22 tabs open. It's amazing. If you could see what I could above this blue line. We're parsing it. All right, so stick with us. We're having connectivity issues. Yeah, they don't want you to know what we see. All right, let's do this. Weather forecast, UK faces 10 days of heavy snow as the coldest Christmas in Santa's history hits Britain. UK today. Looks like six is the high. Nine. I think they're lying down there. The rest is ones and twos. Yeah, whatever that means. Winter will take its first bite this week, putting swaths of the country on alert in Arctic deluge before the monster freeze strikes later this month. The monster freeze is coming, but right now we have to worry about freezing rain and other deadly aspects of the storm, which has been named. We'll get to it. Britain braced for 350 snow curtains. Or whatever that means. A big one. Look at this. What is that? Does this have anything to do with anything? Britain braces for 350 mile wide snow curtain this weekend as minus 15 sea winds approach. Brits could be hit by a 350 mile snow curtain this weekend as it's really freaking cold. The Met Office has issued a warning for dangerous weather, including snow and ice across Scotland, Northern England through this weekend. Heads up, Queen Mother. It warms up, it warns up to eight inches could fall in the worst affected regions. Now, these regions will be the ones that will be worst affected. So, the effects in these regions will be terrible because they will get up to eight inches of global warming goodness. Yeah, they will be whipping up winds and blizzards and exposing parts of the unseen. Plunging temperatures will bring torrential downpours and freezing rain. It's insane. Covering roads, pavements, in deadly ice sheets while other sheeps push the sheeps into the sheep slots. Freeze and snow likely in parts of Britain this weekend as temperatures plummet, according to Getty, which is probably from like 20 years ago, this picture. Huge region of the high pressure over Scandinavia will pull freezing winds in from the Baltic region that will clash with the Atlantic moisture, bringing in heavy snowfall, fear-mongering, and 
power outages and food shortages. Right now, the shelves are completely bare of breads and milks. All you can get is some kind of pickled relish and some other crap in a small jar that's from last year. Thermometers will plunge below freezing across the nation. Though the coming nights with lows of minus four in Scotland and Wales, minus one C elsewhere, it doesn't matter unless you're on that little tippy touch where it says nine C. Bitter winds will make it feel close to minus 15 C in the north, feeling like temperatures of minus eight C across the south. And that is my British mouth. Met Office spokesman Graham Madge said, unsettled weather coming from the Atlantic will bump into cold air of the UK. Along this band is where we'll expect to see snowfall this weekend. Yeah, it will tweak the Queen Mother and others. It's going to feel very cold with temperatures between minus 1C and 4C likely and widely with risks of frosts because these are all below zero so that it would all be very frosty. So they're using science here very clearly. And to understand that, if it goes below zero into the negative, then things are frozen. Yes, I know it could be very confusing, but when you see the negative here, that means it's fucking cold. Yes, high pressure over Scandinavia will draw cold air from the region of the Baltic, which sounds serious as hell. I mean, you don't use the word Baltic unless you mean something. Weather experts have warned the extreme weather is likely to cause disruptions to travel. Oh, they must have they must know something. So apparently when snow falls, travel is disrupted. This is amazing. Breaking information. Boom! I feel like this is the best science channel I've ever been on. Storm Deidre warnings of freezing rain and snow. Here are your warnings and wind watches. Amber warnings through Edinburgh to the south, almost to London. <clears throat> now, snow and freezing rain are expected to create dangerous traveling conditions as Storm Deidre hits Scotland. <laughs> Queen Mother, the Met Office has issued amber warnings for snow and ice across the central belt. We're talking Tayside, Strassicline, and Fief from 9 a.m. GMT on Saturday. That means tomorrow you fluxed, basically midday. Warnings are also in place for southwest Scotland, Lothian, Highland, and Grampian. A band of freezing rain has hit to hit the mountains on Saturday in one of the busiest festive shopping days of the year. So if people don't get shot outright by some crazy psycho loon, you're going to get froze out of the shopping booths. So either way, you're totally fluxed. So if you're going out this weekend, you'll either be shot or frozen to death. It's crazy. Highly unusual, in fact, they say right here in quotes. Forecast to say 5 to 10 centimeters of snow is likely to fall widely in areas where people will be shot to death at Christmas villages. Totally crazy. Both Met Office warnings are due to remain in a place through Sunday that you can either be shot to death buying Christmas gifts or frozen to death if you don't have the right clothes on. Check out the latest tweet. I can't even continue. Amber ice warnings everywhere. So you're going to freeze your ass off while you get shot to death. Take a look. Hear the warnings. And that's a boom boom. Whew. Can we keep this up? Quadrilla halts fracking against operations as tremor persists. Add insult to injury over there in England. And they're not even allowed to frack anymore because they're fracking making quakes happen. What the frack is going on? People are picking it up and they're shutting it down. Seismic update, no quakes of note. Frack quake, dead center, just kicking off in Oklahoma. Pump that toxic waste into the subsurface. We love it. I especially love the deep water injection of nuclear material in that region. It's amazing. <clears throat> 5.2 kicking off at 500 kilometers in Japan is raising my left eyebrow, but you can't see it. That's why I'm telling you, heads up Japan, 7.0 coming any moment. You're about 50% risk of a big boom tonight. Worldwide Volcano News Update, Vienna off ongoing volcanic emissions likely. Sakurajima, Volcanic Ash Advisory, Sabankaya, Fuego, Popocatapeto, Ambrin. Whew, the list is endless. And they're all going... Boom. Now, check this out. This is straight from NOAA, climate.gov. And John Clarkson has been following the channel for at least a year. 
This guy is over in Australia or New Zealand. I think he's in Australia. Pretty sure. <coughs> Friend of the channel. And he's been spewing facts across the interwebs for years. This guy is tonight's climate denier hero. Yes, I said it. He doesn't deny climate. He claims that the global warming alarmists are denying climate. And NOAA climate.gov, the actual entity, the interweb ent act entity of NOAA has come out to attack us personally. Check it out. They, re they reply to John Clarkson. There is overwhelming evidence showing that human emissions are driving current climate change. Now, I want to point out as an academic that taught at university for years, I've been doing this game for decades, that that first sentence is a blatant lie. Noah is lying, and many other mainstream sources, including the mainstream media, the IPCC, the UN, and other people that are holding on to their entire career, which was built on lies, and they know it. <coughs> They're the ones. They're the, they're the ones with the overwhelming evidence of the fraud that shows that human emissions are driving climate change. The facts were known in the late 80s and 90s when I was in university where we proved statistically that without over 1,500 years of acute, specific data worldwide, there would no, be no way to prove that humans are affecting the climate. No way ever. We need a data set 10 times larger than the one we currently have to even be 5% correct in making this assumption. This is based on statistics alone. So for Noah to come out and said there is overwhelming evidence to say humans, human emissions, what is this, fart gas? I mean, this is insane. This idiot writes from Noah, their spokesperson, that human emissions, what does that mean, are driving climate change. Do they know that natural emissions are hundreds of times bigger than human emissions? So how could we be driving it? The oceans emit more CO2 than humans by a factor of 20 at any given time. So why are human emissions driving climate change, Noah? And they continue. It's against our participation policy. If you want to participate in their fraud, you cannot bring the truth, is what they're saying here. It's against our participation policy to spread misleading and false information on our page. That would be facts, Noah. Noah, you would be spreading facts if you allowed your participation policy to include facts. But you do not. It only includes a narrative that you've created through lies, dogmatic science, and misappropriation of money. Because you've been bought and paid for by the corporate elites. You're not a scientific organization. You're a bunch of paid informants from scumbag you. There is Noah one at Noah that has a backbone. You know why I know? Because I am a scientist and I'm reading the shite that you're writing here to the public. You're in an embarrassment to the scientific community. And when the time comes, your offices will be burned because the data there doesn't represent anything except a fabrication of your narrative, Noah, which Noah's nothing about the facts. And they go on to say that this page is for climate science discussion, which means that if you're not a dogmatic alarmist, then you're not part of climate science, which again is a lie. Allowing it to be a forum for misinformation. So they're claiming that the sun shutting down, the solar minimum that we're in, or the grand minima that we're entering are misinformation. This is according to Noah. Quote it. Put it on your uh, refrigerator because they're going to flip any moment. Wait till you see it happen. And, and they go on to threaten the public, because this is a public page. This is your final warning. If you continue to spread the truth 
about the solar minimum we're entering, you will be banned from participating in our page. <clears throat> now, it is as if this was written by a fifth grader when you compare the response to John Clarkson, who's not a scientist, to my knowledge, but he has been following closely all the information from David Dubine, Ice Age Farmer, Diamond at Oppenheimer Ranch Project, and other scientists, including Ben Davidson, and others. And we are very specific on the science. We have no mumbo jumbo. We do not change our narrative. It has been the same since the rip. History repeats itself, and history is not a mystery, but science is a mystery to Noah. Now, let's listen to John Clarkson's response. He says, Dear Noah, climate.gov fraud, hashtag fraud, there is no evidence exclamation point you people are lying to the public not one climate change prediction has come true it is the biggest scientific scam in human history and I feel free he says feel free to ban me from your page because you are denying the grand solar minimum which has begun you are the deniers Noah not us and tell me this who caused the climate change during the Roman and medieval warming periods? Same 300 years warming trend that you claim we caused. And please do not use the word science and evidence to patronize me. For the last time, climate change caused by humans is not proven. And the sooner Michael Mann is jailed for the fraud, the better you people are the biggest pack of scientific frauds on earth. Amen, John Clarkson. You nailed it. <laughs> and that's a boom. He nailed it. He nailed it right to their ass. And they may even ban him. And we're going to follow up on this tomorrow. Because if they ban him, I want all 20,000 of you to go over there and get him. And why not just go over to noaclimate.gov right now? and stick your foot in their ass. I'll leave links below. Whew. Amen. NoahClimate.gov Total fraud. They just know where their funding comes from. Look at the... Look at the... <laughs> please. The jig is up, Noah. You can start to blow up. I'll leave you links to this. It's amazing. I love it. There is overwhelming evidence, i.e. fraud, up to 300% wrong, showing that humans are driving climate change. Eh. Fraud alert. Fraud alert. Fraud alert. Hey, Noah, you know nothing. <laughs> They're so stupid that I'm going to stick their foot right up their ass. I hope you're listening, Noah. Do you know what I'm showing you guys? This is a tree stump. And these real weird twirly things, you know what these are? <clears throat> Those are roots. Now this tree was alive about 1,050 years ago. It was alive right here. Would you know where right here is? Where do you think this tree stump is? Come on, take a guess. So Mendenhall Glacier has been melting because of catastrophic global warming due to humans. Now Mendenhall Glacier is one of the biggest photographed glaciers. You know, you look at the 1850 photo and the current photo and there's nine miles of ice missing. It's amazing. It's melted so far back it's hit land. And there's these ice caves under land. And unfortunately they exposed this tree here. Now, this tree hasn't lived in Alaska, <laughs> according to scientists, ever. In fact, the closest place you can find this is over 1,500 miles south. But a 1,000 years ago, it was growing under the glacier. A 1,000 years ago, there was no glacier here at all. There's still a glacier because you can see it above. We're in an ice cave. 
But a thousand years ago during the medieval warm, there was no glaciers anywhere in Alaska. There was a temperate rainforest. It was as hot as New Mexico, which is what this white fur depicts. It hasn't been like that ever until now because it's changing back due to a natural climate cycle. Unfortunately, it's never going to get as warm as it did in the medieval warm because the planet has been cooling ever since, which is why no one has repopulated Greenland with sheep. So the sheep continue to follow the flock of nonsense called Noah while the melting glaciers uncover the facts, which is our, that in Alaska there was no ice a thousand years ago. It was Mediterranean. There's the stump that proves it. I'll leave you the links to the article that came out years ago that the mainstream still will not show you because they're frauds. Let's talk about cool stuff. Creatures in Jupiter's clouds. NASA's Juno spacecraft captures images that stun the internet. Well, if you pick a dingleberry out of your ass and you put it up on YouTube, it will stun the internet as well. So that's not that fantastic. Let's wait for that to load. No thank you. Christmas Comet, the year's brightest to pass by Earth this weekend. December 16th, that's in one day. The night sky will come alive this weekend when a green comet streaks by Earth on its heels of the Geminid meteor shower. Comet 46P Warrington began brightening in November but will make its closest approach on Sunday and will be visible to the naked eye. First time in anyone's lifetime that we had a visible eye comet. It will come within 7 million miles of Earth. In a proximity that won't happen again for two more decades. It is 30 times the moon's distance from us, so it's not going to hit us. The comet should be brightest on December 16th. As bright as the star in the constellation of the Little Dipper's Handle. So if you live in a city, you'll never see it. Sorry. You want more information, there'll be links below. We don't have the video. Check it out yourself. The Jupiter clouds will be linked below. Huge green fireball from the Geminid meteor shower capt captured on Indiana officer's dash cam. We don't have the video, but we'll refresh it and see if we can get it. Thank you, powers that be. Boom! Who's this guy? He's handsome. Big announcement, Adrian D'Amico. Going to be at LeCon 2019. He is responsible for Suspect Sky on YouTube. If you don't know about the channel, there'll be links below. Go subscribe. If you think I don't believe in chemtrails, then you haven't listened to what I actually say. And in fact, I did an interview with Adrian about a year ago with Leah, maybe eight months ago. It's on the page and it's all about the chemtrail conspiracy. The disinformation is part of the plan. The reason why you, people think all the contrails are chemtrails is because they want you to believe that. So continue to believe the lies or watch the interview and get the facts about geoengineering, which has been going on since the 1950s, before your very lives. And, and subscribe to Suspect Sky and come to LeCon. Now, Adrian is not a conspiracy theorist. He's a scientist that realized that there's a conspiracy. Isn't that crazy? And he's one of the contributors over here at Ben Davidson's Suspicious Observer. And he, I think he might be the webmaster. There he is down here. He's the administrator of the website, suspiciousobservers.org. And he runs Suspect Sky YouTube channel. He's been interested in UFO research for years and found a knack for pulling together information on the power control structure paradigm under which we live, i.e. the Illuminati, the powers that be, shadow government. He will be at LeCon. <coughs> 
and he will be giving a talk on type 5 civilizations. He believes that the universe is filled with intelligent life and advanced civilizations and that we are receiving their signals, I believe. Don't quote me on that. Come to LeeCon or buy the live stream and listen to what Adrian has to say. He's the top in the field for what's going on there. I wouldn't trust anyone else. So I spent about an hour putting in a new section in the store, solar generators. A couple of you have been asking me what are the best. The best ones are the one is the type that you need for your situation. Now these solar generators are completely silent and can run up to 16 power tools at once. You can plug in your refrigerator and other things and run it all night until the sun comes back out when you recharge it. If you can't afford solar panels, all you need is the solar generator, which is listed here. Every model, top of the line, in every size, from 150 watts to 2400 watts, to lithium ion, to every single option is here, but they're all the top rated options. I recommend for entry level, for survival purposes, the $360 Goal Zero. You don't need any solar powers to get started with this power pack, but this is literally will keep your family alive every single day or in the event of a power outage for days uh, because it has a 400 watt hour. Now I'd be looking for a survivalist for more of a 1400 or a 2000 watt hour battery, but this is a small entry level because when you're getting up in that size, you're talking 13 to $2,000. So for 350, you can have a prepper tool here that you don't need solar powers, right? Solar panels right now to charge. You just plug it in your wall until it's charged. And if the power goes out, you can plug everything into this baby. Yeah, you can have lights, you can watch TV, you can do whatever. You can charge your phone, your computer, off of this for days if it's low voltage. And some of the bigger units you're going to use for power tools. <clears throat> there are some larger units here, top of the line. The Chaffon is a really high-end piece. But come out and do some research here. I have over 50 of the top of the line solar generators on the market including some nice panels now for a survivalist that wants to run his refrigerator and all kind of other crazy activities you're going to need a bigger unit so the goal zero yeti 1400 lithium portable power station you can charge this 2000 times that's every single day for five years. And this could be your power source for your whole family. This could run your refrigerator, your power tools, everything. It has been tested at running 16 different items at once. And all you need is five 100 watt solar panels and when the sun comes out, this baby will charge up every single day for five years and will be your autonomous power station to run everything forever. So this is the top of the line, cutting edge power station that you can get for your house. They come in a 3,000. They come in bigger models. If you have the money, I would say get the biggest one. And then you don't have to worry about anything for five years. If the grid goes down for five years, it doesn't matter. If you have panels and the sun comes out, you have maximum power for five years. That's how awesome these products are. Well worth the investment. Save your ass. Save your family. Protect your loved ones. Get them in with a small unit. These are all top rated units from a tiny little 60 watt unit for 60 bucks that will make light bulbs glow and you'll never be in the dark to the one I just showed you that will last for five years being charged every single day. And you don't need power solar panels to get started. You can just plug this into your wall when you actually have electric, keep it charged. And if the grid goes down, you have endless power to do whatever you want for days. 
until the grid comes back on. If it never comes back on, you pop out your solar panels, boom, it's charged, and you're back in the game immediately. This is what you need. If you don't know what you need, this is what you need. Guys, I hope you got something out of the video. 45 minutes of knowledge. We're not here to scare you. We're here to prepare you. That's why I spend this time. That's why I run myself ragged. <clears throat> Things are going to change, though. There's a lot going on. Leah and I may have a baby. And that's going to take some of my time from the channel. We love each and every one of you. We all have our part in this future. We can't do it alone. No one's going to walk out in the woods with a bug out bag and a plan and live. You need a team. 10, 20 people. You need to be dedicated. The possibilities are endless. It is a new paradigm, a new future of endless possibility. Buy silver right now. If you have any money, you will be rich. It can be used after the event as money. Silver's at the lowest it's been in decades. I'm a numismatist. I made most of my money selling coins, so I know what I'm talking about. Buy silver now. Buy it all. We love you. Be safe.